Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're making a video for 2024. We're right at the end of 2023 and I wanted to make this video early for you guys so that way you could get as educated as possible. Now, who am I? My name is Tom Spark. I've been reviewing VPNs and reviewing privacy products for around eight years or so here on YouTube. In my spare time, I do 3D printing, I build computers, and I pretty much just live tech, but especially internet privacy tech that's kind of what I specialize here on the channel and I've been doing this for a long time. Now you might be wondering, well, Tom, why should we listen to your advice? There are other bigger YouTube channels out there in the privacy space. Well, I'm the only one I think that is as transparent and honest as possible when it comes to recommending privacy products. And in fact, I only use affiliate links here on the channel to monetize my content. I have no YouTube ads on any of my videos because I don't believe in ads. If I'm going to be recommending an ad blocker in this video, why would I have ads on my videos? This channel has no sponsors, so everything you know I use and recommend is something I use myself day to day. I don't have any cheap Chinese made merch on my channel. I don't have any YouTube memberships or special bonuses. Anyone could join my discord and talk to me freely and get roles that they choose. And I don't beg for any Patreon donations. Everything here on the channel is free and everybody gets access to everything. Today we're going to be overviewing all the products and tools you might need in 2024 to become as anonymous and private and secure as possible. We're going to be running over each separate tool and use case, whether that be from your email service, your chat app, your browser, your operating system, or even things you might not know you need, like a data broker removal tool or a tool to remove your information from social medias as quick as possible. We're going to be running over everything, even including stuff like network working in which router to choose. I'll be putting timestamps in the description down below because this is probably going to be a massive video. Some of these products are free, some are paid, some are affiliates, some are not. So this is really not a sponsored list or anything like that. It's just a list of the best tools you can use and that I personally use and vouch for every day in my own unique setup. All right, guys, let's get into this guide right now. All right, guys, so the first thing we're going to be talking about is how to remove your personal data from the Internet. Now, this is mainly going to be stuff like your address, your phone, your um, you can even do it for your family members, too. Um, this is one of the most important things that is a growing category of people kind of being aware of it. So, you know, those websites like white pages, well, they pretty much host your information. So if someone finds your real life name, they could find all that information on you. This is how people get docs generally. Um, popular YouTubers that use their real life name. This is how people find their address. They'll look up their name in these websites. And now it's not just white pages. There's actually like hundreds of other websites that do this. And this is also how you get robocalls and these kind of issues on your phone, as well as just general spam. So it's very, very important to remove that information from those websites. So it removes your blueprint and footprint online a, a lot better. And that's gonna be the first tool that we're gonna be talking about guys, that's going to be a data broker removal tool. So as you can see here in this little chart here, we have white pages. This is kind of like the problem. These kind of websites are the problem. This is the stuff they take from you um, and kind of show people. And that is the issue of the problem. These are the issues, the phone numbers, your names, your emails. This is stuff people can find as well as your address on you. So it's definitely a problem. What is the solution to get this information off the internet? Well, a data broker removal tool. I'm gonna to be recommending Incogni for this video. Incogni is the one I personally use and the one I've been recommending here on the channel. And I do think it's the best one because it's the cheapest one too. Um, you can see it here. I'll be putting a link for this in the description down below, like I said, to get the best available discount on it. And this is a great service that is well recommended and very um, reputable. It's actually um, owned by the company Surfshark. So if you're familiar with them as a brand, this is a similar product. Um, so this is definitely the one to check out. Um, very simple. You just sign up, give them your information, and they'll start going around to all these different websites and request the information to be removed. So it is a paid service. That's the only bummer. But you do get what you paid for. It saves you so much time. All right, guys, so the next section we're going to be talking about is social media and the information you put on those websites. Anytime you're using Discord, anytime you're using Reddit, anytime you're even using Instagram, you're interacting with other users and sharing information about yourself. Even if you are purposely trying to obfuscate some of that information, 
Sometimes it can be easy to slip up, and this can lead you to getting doxxed. If you tell someone your real life name, they share it around, or if you make some enemies and they find your real life name, they could end up finding your real life information and harassing you. So one of the solutions outside of just removing that information from websites people could find information about you is removing information from social media itself so that happens less often. And that's the second part here with social media. So what we need to do is find a way to remove comments, screen names, application history, pictures and videos, and even messages as quick as possible. Now to do this for every one of your social media accounts on your own, it would take for a long time, and most of us are gonna be too lazy to do that. Fortunately, there are programs like Redact, which can mass delete your posts very quickly. Uh, now this is the way to do it in my opinion. I made a video outlining how this program works, the pricing of it and stuff like that. Um, I would recommend the premium plan from Redact because it lets you delete stuff older than 30 days, which is probably why most people would want to use something like this. Very useful. It very quickly deletes any Discord messages, posts, um, Reddit messages, anything like that. It can delete tons of stuff. So that way people won't find stuff from your old post history, which you probably are too lazy to do anything about. So definitely something to take advantage of. Next up guys, the problem is internet service providers. Now, what do internet service providers do? Well, they provide you internet. Think Comcast, Verizon, and these kind of services. Um, the only problem is, is that internet service providers aren't really that regulated. Uh, in the United States especially, they could collect your traffic history. Um, they could sell it off, do whatever they want with it pretty much. So anytime you're connected to the internet, they could pretty much see which websites you go to. Um, they then they pretty much can um, see everything you're doing, whether that be the application you're using, how you're using it, whether you're watching prawn, gaming, anything like that. So the tools you need to do um, to obfuscate this, if you want to, um, you need to hide this information from your ISP. If you don't want them seeing everything you're literally doing every single moment of the day, that's when you're going to need a VPN. Now, VPNs are often marketed as a one stop all solution um, for me, VPN providers. And a lot of haters on YouTube like to kind of point at VPN saying they're kind of useless, saying like, hey, you don't really even really need one. At the end of the day, if you do want to obfuscate your ISP from seeing everything you're doing and selling off the data to the highest advertiser, you're going to need a VPN. VPNs are also primarily used for people who want to download torrents. They want to obfuscate their IP address, or if you want to unblock geo restrictions, there's also a lot of other little use cases like that to access new content libraries. It's kind of funny, a lot of VPNs like Surfshark will primarily advertise themselves as saying, hey, you want to watch the Netflix on uh, the office on Netflix? Well, if you change regions, you can do so. And that is true. You can do that. But the primary reason for using VPNs is to hide information from your ISP just for your own privacy, or also to, like I said, kind of download torrent files if you want to do that. Of course, I don't endorse downloading anything illegal of course only download linux isos um, but we have the vpn tier list this is how you find the best vpn i've rated pretty much every single vpn out out, out there this is prim the primary focus of the channel since there's a lot of misinformation about vpns so make sure to check out vpn tier list if you're looking for a vpn like i said there's a lot of benefits with vpns but it can be hard to pick the right one not every vpn is perfect for every user however if you pick an a tier vpn for my tier list you should be pretty good all the links on the website will give you discounts too if they are available next up let's talk about email Email. Now, when you're using email, um, you are giving information away to whoever that email service is. The primary way of doing this would be something like Yahoo or Gmail. And these services pretty much have your data and then they use it for advertising. And there could be data leaks and stuff like that too. Um, and generally these services aren't encrypted when you're um, and have the same level of privacy as some other services out there. And that's why more and more people have turned to using encrypted email as a solution. There are a lot of encrypted emails out there, some paid, some free, but my preferred one to recommend is skiff now why do i recommend skiff well skiff is pretty much free to use that does have a paid plan but you don't need it it even has free alias support which is really cool so basically you can make like a fake email address um give it out to various services out there but they won't know your real skiff address and then you could even delete that alias and make a new one which is cool um, so definitely a really cool service. It even has support for documents, calendars, and stuff like that, as well as cloud storage. Um, so definitely a pretty cool service. I'm not sponsored by Skiff or anything like that. I'm not any affiliate for them. It just really is the best service that I've found for email. Um, it competes with something like ProtonMail, but I honestly think it's a little bit better um, overall, unless you kind of get Proton's 
entire bundled package, but Skiff on its own is, I think, the best encrypted email provider. It's going to give you more privacy and more security compared to something like Gmail or Yahoo. Next, we could talk about messaging and instant messaging. Um, this is a big problem because a lot of the popular ones out there like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, a lot of these things mine your data and use it for advertising as well. And there can be data leaks too. Um, so generally, you want to protect that chat metadata. Um, and the solution to that would be using encrypted chat and privacy friendly ones. Signal is probably the go to one. If you want a similar interface to something like WhatsApp, the instant gratification of messaging someone and you want them to be onboarded pretty easily, Signal is probably the one to use. There are a couple of ones, other ones out there you could check out. Um, lately, I've checked out a couple, but Signal, I think, is still the go-to as of now. It has great PC apps, great mobile apps, dark mode, and everything like that, which I think is essential for applications. Um, so if you're looking to enhance your privacy when it comes to messaging, Signal is the one to check out. Next up, we could talk about browsers. Now, browsers are very important because depending on the browser you're using, um, you could be giving information away or having security leaks and stuff like that. Um, generally, browsers like Chrome don't come built in with that great of privacy, but they do come built in with pretty good security. That said, these browsers, you can customize them to an extent to take less information about you and use it for their services. But generally, what you want to do is use a browser that takes less information on you um, overall and still has good security. So you want to protect your metadata and you want to use a private browser. Um, formerly, I was recommending Brave. Uh, Brave, I think, is still one of the best ones to use for built-in default privacy. However, they've been doing some shady things I don't really like. Um, they basically install a VPN on people's computer without their permission, and they said this was kind of like an issue, but it's still happening. Firefox, unfortunately, isn't as built-in default customizably or built-in default privacy, but you can still customize it. You pretty much just go into the setting, the privacy settings, and customize it a little bit it takes you like five to ten minutes and you should be pretty good um, so i do think firefox as of right now is probably the best private browser now mozilla does have its own serious problems lack of funding lack of some of these things it uses google for its default search engine it has done so for years and that's how it's made a lot of its money but at the end of the day no browser is perfect but right now i'm kind of leaning towards recommending mozilla as a more private privacy friendly browser than something like Chrome, which is just kind of built on the Google profit engine. Um, that said, you are missing out on some of the compatibility of the Google ecosystem. So if that is still more important to you than maybe being annoyed at Brave sometimes, you might want to use Brave instead. Next up, we can talk about your operating system. Now, if you're using Windows 10, you are sending a lot of information to Microsoft. And now there is some leeway here. You can customize Windows to an extent to have less data collected on you. Um, Windows, at the end of the day, it's kind of a shit operating system. I don't really like Mac, Windows. I really don't like Linux either. I don't really like any of the operating systems because I do believe they all have their individual kind of cons. Now, when it comes to Windows, it's obviously the privacy component. The usability is also another issue. I don't think Windows is that good for gaming. I really think Windows, since it is Microsoft's kind of project um, and they own Xbox, they should make a more unified gaming kind of operating system that works better. That's my personal con with Windows outside of the privacy cons. Um, but if you're looking for a better way to protect your privacy when it comes to an operating system, of course, you could check out something like Ubuntu. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of different operating systems when it comes to Linux. Um, Ubuntu, in my opinion, is the easiest one to use, the most popular one for uh, privacy friendliness. It's gonna feel a little bit like a Mac, um, but it's gonna have better privacy, and it's gonna have a lot of cool built-in things that you don't have on Windows. Just a little bit easier to use in some ways. Um, of course, there are some cons. The gaming compatibility is a little bit limited, but getting better or raw. Um, and it's going to be just a little bit less compatible with some things, but it's definitely going to have better privacy than Windows. So that could be something to check out too if you're looking for um, Linux. Next up, we could talk about ads and viruses. Um, now, this is something you need to be aware of that can influence your privacy. If someone gets on your computer, if some ads are maliciously taking your data, um, you could have compromised accounts and stuff like that. So it's something definitely to be aware of. Um, and you're going to be wanting to use, uh, generally, you want to use a antivirus and maybe even an encrypted dns or something like that as well as the ad blocking dns there are a couple different options here when we come to it um, AdGuard is probably one of the best ones to block ads. So this is primarily going to block malicious websites and ads across your network. The cool thing about this is it's pretty free to use. You just pretty much copy a code, put it in your router, and all the ads are going to be blocked in your network. This is very easy to do. Um, but we can also talk about some other options too. Quad9 is also excellent. It doesn't block as many ads, but might have a little bit better security overall. Definitely a solid option if you really have some other solution for ad block. 
talking. Um, but we also kind of want to do think about um, the security component of viruses and things like that. Generally, you're going to want some kind of malware scanner or something like that. Um, I would actually recommend something like Malwarebytes. Um, it's de definitely a solid pickup. That's the one I use a lot. It's one I've trusted for years. Um, definitely pretty good. Um, you can also, if you're in the Surfshark ecosystem, there are antivirus is actually pretty good too. So if you're looking for a bundle of all sorts of good components of privacy things, Surfshark's bundle isn't bad. Next up, we could talk about passwords, and this is definitely an important one too. Um, you don't want to be making your own passwords generally. You want to be making unique, powerful, strong passwords and saving them so you don't forget them. Um, and really, the only way to do this is by using a password manager. Um, my recommended one is going to be Bitwarden. This is pretty much the universally acclaimed one in the privacy community. It's free to use. They're premium options, but you don't really need to upgrade it if you don't want to. Hasn't really been any security leaks or anything like that. It's not quite as user friendly in, or as intuitive or as some of the other ones maybe out there. 1Password, NordPass, maybe a little bit like quicker to use maybe I would say is a better word. But overall, I do like Bitwarden the most um, because it's just a little bit more generous when it comes to its free model. So definitely a solid pickup. Next up, we could talk about networking. And generally, this is a section that a lot of people kind of forget get to talk about. Um, generally, what you want to do is upgrade that router into a more powerful, secure router. I recommend a Asus router. Um, I'll be putting this link in the description down below. This is a mesh networking router, but you could just buy one if you want. The reason I like this router specifically is because it has a really good application, very good coverage and expandability. Like I said before, um, with the, the DNS, this has ad block built in, so you could just enable it very quickly. It has VPN built in too, if you want to configure that with some VPN configuration configurations. Overall, it's just extremely easy to use. You could block certain devices from accessing the internet like IP cameras so they don't um, ever have the chances of a hacker spying on you. Um, definitely you want to update your routers, um, but having a good powerful router that is secure is actually very important so no hackers get into your network because a lot of times old routers have backdoors and things like that. All right, guys, that pretty much rounds up my complete um, anonymity and privacy rundown. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this extended tutorial. And let me know down in the comments down below if I missed anything you might think of that could increase your privacy and anonymity. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.